Hi, I'm Kelly, and for a couple of years, I've made videos for the Graphics Fairy Premium Member site, where I show how to use their images with mixed media to create a wide variety of projects. This year, we also started a series on collage art. In these videos and in my own work, I am drawn over and over to the same art supplies which help give my work a signature look. Today I wanted to slow things down and introduce some of the things that I can't do without. Some are store-bought and some are homemade. All are tried and true. So please stay with me and I hope you get some good ideas. I'm going to start by talking about paper because it is the basis of everything that I make. Also, I probably have a sketchbook obsession. I do like to make my own. It is easier than you think. It is very inexpensive. And most importantly, it lets me control the weight of my paper. And the weight of your paper is very important especially for this kind of work, because it has to stand up to uh, liquid media such as paint and ink and glue. So you need something with some oomph. And here's where you can check the weight of your paper. This one is by Goldline, and you can see that it is 200 GSM. That is grams per square meter. That's how much it weighs. Also 90 pounds. So it'll have a corresponding weight. This is a medium weight watercolor paper that, again, I use when I make my own. It's got some uh, heft to it, but it's also flexible, as opposed to this paper by Fabriano, which is beautiful watercolor paper. It is 300 GSM or 140 pounds and while it's lovely to paint on it's more like a card and for me personally isn't gonna work in a sketchbook I do buy blank books these I think are the paper is gonna be about hundred and sixty GSM-ish. For comparison, notebook paper and uh, printer paper is probably 100 GSM, maybe a little less. So that'll give you an idea. Uh, they probably, I think, cost between 12 and $15. Uh, but like I said, they're a good quality and they last a long time. I have nothing against a cheaper book. Uh, this one is by Dela Rowney with a paper cover and the paper is uh, 160 GSM, 109 pounds. So you can use ink and paint and it's not going to fold or buckle on you. And it cost one pound 55, which is about under $2. Also, it's really lightweight, so, and you can find them everywhere. I do like a portrait mode. I've used it for many, many years. And you can get a lot of layout in a portrait mode book. See, look, there's a, a graphics fairy art journal page. And again, you can see it takes a lot of beating. Recently, however, I have discovered landscape mode in sketchbooks. And I love the landscape mode. Especially with art journals, it gives me a lot of room for play, to make a, a complicated narrative, just do a big old layout. And if I want to use it for a travel journal, I can just draw small, 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 
and get a lot in there. Finally, I want to show you this guy. Uh, this is uh, made by Han Müller, as is this small one. It is an accordion sketchbook with heavy watercolor paper. And one of the reasons I'm showing this to you is not only is it charming as all get out, but you can see that even though I've had it for months, I have not had the nerve to actually start working in it. And that is because a blank book is intimidating. But I have a way to work around that, which brings me to my next art supply that I want to talk to you about. Let me introduce you to coffee and tea. Now, when I buy a new blank book, before I do anything else, I prepare the pages using tea and coffee. And yes, I actually use these quite a bit. I'm going to take an eyedropper or a pipette, and fill it with some tea, and just pour it on my page. Now I'm going to blot it. And when I open it, hey presto, it's messy. I let that dry and then do another and another. You don't have to do the whole book. You only have to stay two or three pages ahead of yourself. Here's one that's already dried and you can see it's very subtle. And you can work into it or you can work over it. But it's just going to help make your book nice and smudgy and friendly. I also like to use coffee for mark making. Uh, again, to prepare pages or also to finish them. Sometimes if they're already done and you want some embellishment and some interest. But let's look. I'm going to take my teacup. Dip it in the coffee. And now add some rings to my pages. And again, you can work into that, let it suggest something to you, or just draw over it and have fun. Remember when we used to not want tea and coffee stains in our books? What were we thinking? You can also use coffee in the next art supply that I want to talk about, which is a mini mister or spritzer. Now you can buy these pre-made. These are by Tim Holtz and they come in his signature distress colors. Or you can make your own. You can buy the blank misters. These are by Ranger, or you can even get a cheaper version and just buy a, a sample size squirt bottle from uh, Poundland or the dollar store or just about any place you can think of. You just want to mix ink and water or paint and water and spray. I like this because I like a lot of unpredictability and mess in my work. And these do give you a lot of it. As I said, I keep one with coffee in it. And I actually sometimes put this in my travel kit because if I wanna work on preparing pages while I'm on the road, there you go. You have some nice, messy mess. You can also use the spritzers to finish and embellish pages. This is an art journal page. And I've got some blue ink and water in here. 
just spritz it along the top and then look at that nice 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 messy finish to my page now let's talk about a more conventional art supply the pencil but not so much about sketching and drawing pencils. Uh, these are different. My favorites. My favorites are water-soluble graphite and charcoal. Water-soluble graphite, and these are made by Karen Dash, although there are a lot of different ones out there, go on like a conventional pencil, which is good. But you can also then activate them with water. And to do that, I'm going to use one of my favorite, favorite art supplies, which is a water brush. You fill the reservoir with water, and that feeds into the brush, which then lets you paint or draw anywhere, even if you don't have water with you. And you can see that now I'm activating this and it's turning into a lovely inky mess. And the reason that I like that so much that this is one of my favorites is because I do not draw well. I don't. I wish I did, but that ship has sailed. Here is a drawing of a church that I did not do. This is the drawing of the church that I did. And as you can see, it basically looks like a stick figure church done by a seven-year-old. But I'm not gonna let that stop me. I am going to lean into it like this. Using a water brush or any other brush, I am then going to turn the graphite into lots and lots and lots of messy ink. So now what I have is the beginning of something that is fun and dare I say it, even a little bit atmospheric. So I'm leading into that, not pretending I can draw any better than I can. It's still not a good drawing. However, it is not a bad start to a journal page. And that's what matters. And that's why I love this as an art supply. By the way, if you are interested in learning more about water solubles, I have a video just about that on the Graphics Fairy Premium member site. And I have linked to it in the text below in case you are already a member or if you're thinking about becoming one. I really like charcoal pencils for the same reason that I like the uh, water soluble graphite because they're really really forgiving which is a fancy way of saying they smudge good if you look you can find them in colors and again this is not going to ever be a precise drawing for someone like me but it's just such a great tool for letting me make beautiful things, even though I'm not really good at drawing. So see, so you can add some detail here. It's aggressively messy.
So a completely different way that I use charcoal in my more conventional work in uh, my altered books and art journal pages is to make my images really pop. So if I have a focal point and a layout, I just color all the way around it with some charcoal. This one is by Conte and it is a medium thickness. Then blend and all of a sudden you've got some depth and perspective and interest to your page. And finally, let's play with stencils because I actually use stencils a lot in my art journal work. While I do have quite a few Tim Holtz stencils and really like them, another great thing about stencils is that you can find them in unusual places, no name, and they can be very affordable. I think this was two bucks. So I'm gonna show two ways that I use stencils in my work. One is tidy and one is messy. So guess, guess which one I really like the best. I'm gonna show you how to do this working into the spritzed pages to show you that you can, even though this is kind of aggressive, just start building your page around it. So for this, I'm gonna use another tool that I really like and this is called a blending tool, also by Tim Holtz. Basically, it is a little teensy makeup sponge held onto a holder by Velcro. As I say a lot, you don't have to have one. You can always use a makeup sponge. But I've never been sorry that I bought a couple of these guys. You want to put the sponge end and load it with your stamp pad. This is a stamp pad ink. And now you work into your stencil. I don't like a perfect matchy matchy edge myself, so I kind of let it fade asymmetrically and there we go. So that is one way to use your stencil with a blending tool and an ink pad. Finally, let's look at this pretty one over here and use a more messy technique. Going back to another tool we looked at, the mini Mr. Spritzers. Okay, so just wanna hold that in place and mist over it. And when you pull up, you're gonna have a nice, messy start to a page there. And there you have it. A lot of my favorite art supplies. I went through a lot of information here, and if you've got any questions about what I've used, or how I've used them, you might find the answer in the text below this video. If not, uh, be sure and leave a question or some feedback and I'll be happy to get back to you. Let's see, in the meantime, if you like this video, everybody at the Graphics Fairy would be very grateful if you would give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until I see you again.